This is the first recording of several for Unit 4 Test 1 review on analytic trigonometry, where we're going to use trig identities to simplify expressions, solve equations, and evaluate exact values of angles when they're not on the unit circle. So we're going to start with questions 1 and 2. So question 1, we're simply asked to simplify the trig expressions are given. So a lot of this is just using your first foldable of trig identities, quotient, reciprocal, and Pythagorean identities. So in problem 1, I notice that I have sine squared on top, cosecant squared on the bottom. I also have um, adding or subtracting once in each of those, so that means I'm probably going to use the Pythagorean identity. So um, if we look at the top, remember the first Pythagorean identity is cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So if I subtract the sine squared over to the right hand side so that it looks more similar to what we have in our equation, we get cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So that is what I'm going to replace the numerator with. The 1 minus sine squared x gets replaced with cosine squared x. The denominator seems to um, uh, be more, most similar to the third identity, which is 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So I want to get a minus 1 over with a cosecant squared, so I'm going to subtract it from the left, which leaves cotangent squared x by itself and I get cosecant squared x minus 1. So that's simply just a rewriting of the Pythagorean identities. So the denominator now becomes cotangent squared x. So right away I can see I have a, a much simpler problem, um, but I still want to get rid of the fractions, if at all possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, I'm going to use the reciprocal identity, and since I'm dividing by cotangent, the reciprocal states that it's the same as multiplying by tangent squared. So now my problem becomes cosine squared x times tangent squared x. Now there's more than one way to do this. This is just one method. Okay, So now I want to get everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to do cosine squared x times sine squared x over cosine squared x. And the last step is to, since now I have everything in the same terms, or in terms of sine and cosine, and I have just fractions that are multiplying, I can cross out what's common. If you need to put that cosine over 1, put it over 1. And I'm going to see that I have left over, at the end, sine squared x. And that's going to be the simplest that I can get to. Okay, so for problem B, um, since I'm just multiplying a string of trig, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put first step is going to put everything in terms of sine and cosine. So secant becomes 1 over cosine x. Cotangent becomes cosine x over sine x. That's the quotient identity. And sine just stays sine, but I'm going to put it over 1 just to make it easier to see where I cross things out. So now, since I have everything in terms of sine and cosine and I'm multiplying all my fractions, I can cancel out what's common on the top and the bottom. So I can cancel out the cosines and the sines, and I'm going to be left over with 1 as my final answer. So make sure, remember, you're not going to be able to use that first foldable, so you need to make sure you know your quotient identities, your reciprocal identities, and your Pythagorean identities. Now let's look at problem number 2. We're going to use the sum and difference identities to find the exact values. So the first thing we want to do in these problems is to find two angles on the unit circle that will combine together to give us the, the angle measurement inside our parentheses. There's lots of pairs we can use. You can either add or subtract to get that number. So for 255, I chose to use 210 and 45 degrees. So once I've decided that, I notice I have a plus sign to add my angles. I'm going to use the sum identity for cosine. And as I go through, alpha I'm going to replace alpha with 210 and beta with 45 degrees. So I'm going to write my identity, my cosine sum identity, but I'm going to replace alpha with 210 and beta with 45. So the identity now becomes cosine of 210 times the cosine of 45 minus the sine of 210 and the sine of 45. Okay, so now that I've rewritten my identity so that I'm using all unit circle angles. I'm going to go back to my unit circle and I'm going to replace the trig with its um, with its ratio value. So remember cosines are your x-coordinate, sines are your y-coordinate. So cosine of 210 becomes 
negative square root of 3 over 2 because it's in quadrant 3. Cosine of 45 degrees is just a positive square root of 2 over 2. Minus sine of 210, again it's in quadrant 3, so it's going to become a negative 1 half. And the sine of 45 is a positive square root of 2 over 2. So remember I talked about in class that whenever you're doing the sine or cosine sum or difference, that you will always have a denominator of 4. And you're always going to have a square root of 6 and a square root of 2 in your numerator. What you're looking for is which one's positive and negative um, based on what you're multiplying here. So I noticed for this problem, square root of 3 times square root of 2 gives me my square root of 6. And there's a negative sign in front of one of them, so the square root of 6 is going to be negative. And over here on the second term, the square root of 2, 1 times square root of 2 is gives the square root of 2, but I have a minus a negative, which means that becomes plus. So that's going to be my answer for that one. So looking at the last question we have here with question 2, um, sine of 165, I'm going to rewrite 165 as, um, I'm going to do difference this time. I'm going to use the same numbers that I just did, 2, 10, and 45, because I already know the, uh, the uh, ratios for that. So I could get 165 by simply saying 2, 10 minus 45. So now I'm going to use the sine identity, but I'm going to do the difference one. So I'm going to rewrite this. Uh, we're going to replace it with the identity, and again, alpha is 210, beta is 45. So this becomes the sine of 210, sine of 45. Whoops, sorry, that's wrong. Sine of 210 times the cosine of 45 minus the sine of 45, cosine. 210. Sorry, I'm running out of room. Okay, so now I already know all my ratios because I just used them in the last problem. So I'm going to replace sine of 210 with negative 1 half. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Minus uh, the sine of 45 with square root of 2 over 2. Sine, cosine of 210 is a negative square root of 3 over 2. Multiply out. Remember, you're always going to have a 4 on the bottom. So my denominator is 4. My first term in the numerator is going to be a negative square root of 2. And my second term is, because I'm subtracting a negative, is going to wind up being a plus square root of 6. So notice my answers look very similar, but the differences between them are the pluses and minuses in the numerator. All right, so that is question 1 and 2 from your review. You should see questions like that, very similar to that, on the test.